Hey friends, Sean and Tree here from Seek and Enjoy. And it finally happened to us. The uh, dreaded death diesel exhaust fluid system on our RV that is notorious for having this issue finally happened to us. It's, hey, it was happening to us in uh, Telluride, so we went to Grand Junction and got it fixed. Um, <laughs> But I don't think they did anything, and we just got back on the road, got about 300 miles, and the uh, engine light and the death warning light came on, and so we turned around to head back towards the closest dealer. Uh, oh, we, I should, we should mention that we were in the middle of nowhere, pretty much. We were on the loneliest highway. Yeah, we were on Highway, highway 50, 50 in Utah. In Utah, heading mm -hmm. towards, the, towards the Nevada border. So we were out in the middle of nowhere when it happened. And as soon as I saw the light, I'm like, okay, I, we should stop and probably start heading back towards the Freightliner dealer we saw in Salina, that we knew it was in Salina. Which is about 100 miles away, I think, Yeah, so point. we made it 50 miles before the RV started slowing down. We got a hold, the whole system is, the uh, our, um, Vehicle is going into shutdown is all I saw on my whole dashboard. <laughs> this warning, Not a good message. vehicle is shutting down and in 50 miles it started derating to where it started slowing down and we got to uh, Highway 50 near uh, the 15 interstate and we near just pulled Holden, over Holden, Utah. and uh, we have CoachNet uh, roadside service so it took them about an hour and a half to find somebody to come get us and it took them another 20 minutes after that to get out here and so they've got uh, Trigger all hooked up to the tow right now he's just doing a couple last little things and then we're gonna follow them um, our biggest uh, concern is that the parts to fix this could be five months out and so if the RV if it's five months out and we can't drive our RV we're finding out that there are some temporary fixes that we can do to have a mechanic uh, adjust it so the def system is just like getting cut off completely so the sensors not being uh, activated and um, and there's a couple things that we can do for our rig and we're going to find yeah. out what those are so that we can hopefully get the crossing fingers hopefully we can okay, get to our can. appointment in grass valley california next monday and um, that's not okay. looking too good <laughs> um, if we should just take the rv straight to tucson and um and then fly to california to get our stuff out of storage and take it back down to tucson and get it in storage there so that's kind of lots of decisions where we're at. lots of decisions <laughs> taking into account what could happen what's the worst that could happen and what we would do under those situations and the worst that would happen is we'd be stuck for somewhere for five months in a tiny town of utah or a, t a tiny little town in utah and i guess i would look for a job if that was what the case but this was. is a really good opportunity for us to really practice the the whole uh going with the flow and not letting this really bum us out too much um you know fortunately we you know we do have some good amount of savings and you know we just have really good attitudes about it and we could just get this all you know all upset and bummed out about it and i've had a hard day this has been a hard day for me i had a, a, a covid conversation with a friend who just anyway i'm not going to go yeah. into it it's just the the bottom line is get vaccinated get vaccinated exactly all right so uh so we're gonna turn this off now because i think the guy's pretty close to getting ready to to head out of here so we'll do some video of uh trigger being towed in front of us <laughs> much love see you guys later there's trigger getting towed we're following behind for the deaf header to, to show up at the mechanic. One of the pins in the uh, toe arm that connected to the car in the, um, it's called the clevis, uh, the part that connects to the car, the pin some, somehow popped out and we were just about three miles or so away from the exit that we were gonna get off at when these young girls in a car next to us motioned to us pointing, get over, get over. So we uh, pulled over and found out that the pin had popped out and we thought that there was some damage to the car because the, the arm of the tow bar had actually was like under the bumper of the car. But luckily, silver is all good and running fine. 
Um, so we were able to, to order a part from uh, NSA Products, I think is what it's called, um, where we bought the, the tow bar. And so they're uh, sending us a new clevis so we can get it attached and be back in full operational mode. <laughs> All right, so here we are back at a Freightliner Mechanic for the third time. So this story, as you may have seen parts of it already, started after we left the Denver area after seeing String Cheese incident there for some concerts. And um, so we were headed towards Leadville and we got the first um, um, in the malfunction indicator light came on and uh, we uh, immediately called Freightliner and the first person told us that it needed a new DEF header. So. Uh, we drove it to uh, Grand Junction to the uh, Freightliner mechanic there and we told them what Freightliner said. Supposedly they, they even got on the phone and talked to each other and um, they looked at our rig and they changed a water valve on the rig and uh, so I just I wasn't feeling very confident about it and we drove about 300 miles from there. We got about 100 miles west of here and the, actually, we got to the place where we camped last night, and in the morning, the light, engine light came on and the def light came on, and then as soon as I put it in gear, it turned off. And we drove about uh, 60 miles from there, and the def light came on with the whole engine light, and it started derating the engine, which means it goes into limp mode, which means it slows down gradually to five miles an hour. Um, so we started heading back until it slowed down. Um, anyway. We got here, they supposedly fixed it by doing an update on the software after we had been here for like, I think five days, four days. And uh, they said they did the update, they sent us on our way again, and I just really felt like they were doing the minimum and just weren't really, you know, I just didn't really feel good about the work that had been done to that point. So we got to the place where we were, the same spot we left when we left here a couple days ago. On Monday, we got to that same camping spot, and sure Holden, enough, Utah. just before we got there, when we got off the freeway, the deaf light came on again over near Holden, Utah, exactly. And uh, the deaf light came on again, and the engine light, and so we stayed there. We called Freightliner uh, Custom Chassis, and we told them what had been going on. It's the third time we're broken down, and um, told them the whole story. And finally, they agreed that it needed a new deaf header. I, um, after already being told that. So they said they needed, needed a new death header and they called these guys here and told them they approved the death header and they went ahead and ordered it. And they said it was gonna be two weeks. So we were in a camp spot that was, it would work for a couple weeks, it was nice. And um, two days later today, they called us up and said the part was it. Actually, I called them this morning just to make sure they ordered the part. Uh, so we weren't just sitting out there waiting for something that wasn't happening. And um, after talking to the girl, a few minutes later, she called me back and said they actually had the part. And so we uh, got in the rig, turned it on. Sure enough, that def light and the engine light was on again. And I got onto the freeway and drove about five miles and the dumb light turned off. So we didn't go as far as we did the first time when the started derating. Um, it's only 37 miles here, I think. Something about that. And um, so the light went off and we made it all the way here. So I imagine if we would have driven another 30 or 40 miles, that light probably would have came on again once the death fluid got hot. And, uh, and just, anyway, so. Yeah, so here we are back at our third time at a Freightliner mechanic in the last two weeks or so. <laughs> and uh, We're getting really familiar with Freightliner. Hey, on the plus side, they have showers. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be hitting that in the morning. And the, um, yeah, so they, I heard that if they actually changed the death header, that, um, that that should be the end of our problem. So I'm hoping that's true. Crossing fingers. Right, so. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's it for our, uh, the, the short story of our uh, long breakdown. So we'll see you later. <laughs> All right, here we are on the, the loneliest highway in America, Highway 50. We left Eli, this Ely, Nevada this morning. Uh, we were waiting for some packages, but they all got canceled for some reason. The place in Ely that we were sending them to for Amazon refused them and sent them back. So we didn't get any of those packages. So we just decided to head on down the road, try to get closer to Reno. As you know, we're having issues with our deaf system. So um, uh, we'd gotten it fixed a couple times and they finally put a new header in. But I don't think they fixed the lines. The lines seem to be crossed because the temperature of the uh, deaf 
is getting up to like 160 degrees while I'm driving, about an hour into driving. Uh, it's up to 160 degrees when it should be no more than 10 degrees over ambient temperature. So I got an hour in and I saw it was hot. So I just decided I'd stop for about a half an hour to see if it cools down at all. Um, I'm not really sure if it's gonna, but uh, we'll find out. No lights have come on, no engine lights have come on. So it's just running hot. And I think um, I, when I finally get to a mechanic, I'm gonna have him actually physically check the lines and blow air through them to make sure that they're in the right spot. Um, so yeah, stop it for a few minutes. Gonna have a piece of cheese, drink some water. And uh, yeah, I guess we're about halfway to the place that we're going, which is still a couple hours from Reno. But um, again, still waiting for more mail, waiting for the, uh, oh, I can't show it to you right now, the, um, the tow bar piece for the tow bar so we can put our tow bar back together, filling our car. So uh, anyway, that's an update from where we are now. And I uh, hope you're having a good day. Talk to you guys later. Hey friends. So here's the final update of our uh, death issues. Uh, as you know, we left Salina, Utah, and we made it to Moab and then, uh, Ely, Nevada, and we left, left Ely, and we noticed that we were still having hot deaf temps, but uh, Freightliner said unless the deaf light comes on, there's nothing they can do, so I just quit looking at it, because we drove it for two years before we had any problems with the deaf header that we had, so I figure it's still in warranty for three more years, so we'll just keep driving it till the light comes on, and, um, but I did hear today that Cummins has put out a patch for the, uh, for the chip, that controls the whole thing. So for people who are stuck with their RVs that can't get a DEF header for them, um, there's a patch now that they can just bypass the DEF system for them. Uh, that's not true for us with our rig because it's still under warranty and Freightliner has DEF headers available to change to change them out. And I guess they're just gonna keep changing them out till they actually fix the, uh, the lines, the heating and cooling lines, which seem to be reversed and which seems to be causing the problem of overheating. So, um, so that's where we are. We made it back to California. We're in up in the area, Truckee area right now, and we have our appointment day after tomorrow to get our lounge chairs put in and get our microwave uh, convection oven and all the last little um, uh, warranty stuff that we have to get it fixed. And uh, we'll, I'll be happy to get that done. And we'll see what happens as we go down the road. Fortunately, we're on the West Coast and there's a lot of Freightliners everywhere, but no matter what, Freightliner tows them because it's under warranty. So it's on them if they want to keep, you know, spending $600 to tow my vehicle in somewhere to do a $1,000 fix that doesn't actually get fixed because they don't fix the lines. Well, that's kind of on them for the next three years. So we'll see what happens. Um, I think that's everything. So uh, anyway, please like and subscribe our channel to our channel and uh, hit the bell so you can see when we post new ones, which isn't that often. <laughs> try to do it more often and um anyway yeah i hope you're having a good day we are here and uh peace